Guess who's back from the dead? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, at any rate, this is round six of the F1SR 1974 series. We won't be taking that shortcut there, but we will have to deal with that chicane, and the face palm is to indicate what will usually happen at this particular point in the track. Oh, goodness. Maybe I was lucky to get the flu. Uh, this race is brought to you by the Skoda 100, the complete car. Sleek, stylish, responsive. It's popular with blondes. And no, it's not the car that was buried by an avalanche in Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo. This race is also brought to you by Pilsner Urkel. It is smooth, crisp, clean, and it's the original Pilsner. Don't believe me? Well, maybe you should check your skepticism at the door. And now, on to the race. This is Peter Blum, a familiar sight at the front in this series, and he won the pole. Pulling up into his uh, assigned slot. And that's Nick Severn. Peter and Nick have started on the front row in many races this uh, season. I think I should look into that. It's quite a regular thing. Angelo starting third, which is also kind of regular. The rest of the car is lining up. The facts for this race, 35 laps. Uh, one mandatory pit stop to change all four tires. I hope my voice will get through this uh, replay. Here come the lights. Green light, here we go. So remember, we got that face palm chicane coming up here. Everybody seems to be getting away cleanly. And through the chicane we go, the proverbial needle. This is Peter Lang. Oh, goodness. Well, it looked like he was going to do well there until he got tagged by uh, Momo. But it's just one of those things. It's, it's a lot of cars coming through. One, oh, you got the 100-meter sign, too. It's just a case of... There were 29 cars in this race. Or so, no, actually, 26. 26 cars trying to thread the needle uh, all together. Now, this is a replay from another angle, and you can see in the middle there, just people start spinning and touching and... Yeah. Just not going to work. The one who made out the worst is uh, Momo there because he uh, lost his rear wing, and that takes a long time to repair. Gets away, and uh, so does Slow Mo there. Now, this is the view from Slow Mo's car. At the start, everything seems routine. And then suddenly he comes up on everybody really fast, maybe faster than he was expecting, but he gets onto the kitty litter and actually does a good job of keeping the car off the barrier and continues without any damage. Not so for uh, Momo, as I mentioned earlier. But, you know, long race, 35 laps, so you just keep going. So, back to the front. This is still lap one. Peter Blond leading, Nick Severin in second. Familiar story. This track at Autodrome Most is uh, kind of a hilly track, but paradoxically, the turns are relatively flat in nature, and it's uh, a track that promotes quite a bit of oversteer and, and slippery uh, sliding driving. So here's Nick stalking Peter. Coming down to complete lap number one. Taking a brief look, but he knows that there's a long way to go. This is the final turn that leads them on to the uh, main straight to complete the lap. Now, looking just a little further back, this is a battle for 7th place, I believe, as they come to the line to complete lap 1. This is Joel Tremblay we're riding with, and he's following Ace Jr., who is finally driving the correct car. Thank you very much. Through the chicane. Joel was wise there. He probably could have run right up on the back of Ace Jr., but uh, thought better of it because it probably would have caused an accident. This is the view from Ace Jr.'s car. Oh, goodness! Just barely manages to fend off Joel there. Joel having another look, but uh, Ace Jr. Managing to defend his position. That's it's a great piece of driving there. And, and nice trim on this car, too. I didn't, I didn't notice uh, before when I loaded up the game that there was a Hesketh that had those red and blue stripes on the flanks. That's pretty sweet. These two actually had a pretty spirited battle throughout the race. This is just one chunk of it. In front of them is Nicholas Cole, who also had a really good race for himself. We'll be seeing more of him later. 
Oh, looking on the outside, but uh, that's not really the best place to pass in that corner. So Ace Jr. doing a very good job of defensive driving here at uh, round six. Over the line they go to complete lap number two. Now, this is lap three. Excuse me. And this is uh, Richard Tall attempting to pass on Angelo in the chicane. Probably not the best place to do that. Oops. Pirouettes. And Richard emerges with no damage, at least no visible damage, but uh, Angelo lost his wing. Now here's the replay from Richard's car. Comes down the inside of what you can call the chicane. Clips that curb there, but you can see it's just, in order to take the chicane at speed, you have to thread it like a needle, and there's just not enough room for two cars side by side through there. It's just not physically possible. It may be physically possible at slow speed, but uh, not faster. Now this is Carl, I think that might be Angelo, off again. Uh, this, this was another race that Angelo uh, had a lot of bad luck in. It's strange how your fortunes can change. Angelo was our champion in 73 last year. This year, he can't buy a break in a lot of these races. That's the way it goes. So Carl here following, I believe that's Philippe. And curiously, a whoops gives him a little bit of a tap there. And, oh goodness, chain reaction accident. Not a good day for Don Nichols and his crew because both their cars involved in that incident. And now, a huge bottleneck ensues. You have all these other cars coming up. Some of them have probably been in pits already to fix damage, so they're out of sequence. Carl here trying to pick up the pace, and there's Angelo behind him. Yeah, it was. Oh, goodness. So the race goes from bad to worse for both of these guys. That's not cool. Anyway. But Carl does manage to get the car going again. Anyway, back to... Uh, this is uh, Ace Jr. and uh, Joel again. Still close together. And this is on lap six. Look at this. He's gonna. He's actually trying him on the outside again. Doesn't work, but it's almost like he threw uh, Ace Jr. a dummy there, and he gets by. Very, very clever maneuver. So now we're looking from Ace Jr.'s car forward to uh, Joel Trombley. Coming up to the chicane, watch this. Goodness. Look at all the dancing that goes on there. I mean, it's just... If you're off by just the tiniest bit, you're into the wall. And then through this series of very tight back and forth corners. So it looks as if at this point... Joel's got the upper hand, but a good, good scrap between these two. Now we're back at the front. This is Nick following jo oh, sorry, following Peter again. Getting the toe. He's bought it. He's, he's been biding his time. Comes through the inside, and Nick Severin takes the lead. This was at about the midway point of the race, roughly. So, still a long ways to go. Now, back a little further in the field, this is bottom half of the top ten with uh, Nicholas Cole coming up on uh, Ace Jr. Looking for a way by. That's uh, Sean Hutchinson in the front there. Let's them both by. inside here. Oh, goodness! Almost! Now watch this. This is an interesting thing that happens on this track. So he's closing back up on him again. Coming through this left-hander and runs off into the grass. My educated guess is that he was looking at the back of Ace Jr.'s car and missed the uh, turn-in point. It's very easy to do at that section because it comes up and you're not expecting it. No matter how many laps you do, at least for me, it was difficult. And it actually it doesn't matter because he, Ace Jr. was pinning anyway. Now, back to the front. A few laps later, and this is Peter following Nick. Down the inside, same maneuver. 
that Nick pulled previously and Peters back in the lead. It's important to note that this is before any pit stops have taken place for these two. So we continue on into the next lap. Now, Nick Severin here, this is actually a lap later, following Peter and not really making much headway. Actually, Peter's running away. And Nick very sensibly thinks the best thing to do at this point is just uh, take my mandatory pit stop, which is what he does. Runs over the rumble strip there a little bit, but comes in. JPS number 31. And then this is Peter, not too long later in the... Uh, in the race along later. That's not really proper grammar. Anyway, Peter making his mandatory stop from the lead. And this is one of these races where we needed to observe the pit speed limit. And who inherits the lead? Another Lotus, number one, Dylan Yates. He's currently second in the championship, I believe. through the start finish here. He comes in. If you look back there, you can see Joel Trombley and uh, I believe it's uh, Christian Bergman, uh, who was in his first race uh, in F1SR competition. And from what I understand, clocked the fastest lap of the race. Great achievement. Um, so these three are coming through here. New first, second, and third cars. And here's Peter emerging from the pit lane in fourth after his stop. But of course, eventually, all three of those cars would have to stop. And this is Dylan coming in for his stop. The second and third place cars also stopped. And naturally, that means that Peter is back in the lead, cycles through. And that also means that uh, Nick Severin cycled through into second place once again. So the shuffle ended up just back where it started. Through that chicane again. Not many laps to go at this point. Now this is the final lap. And this is for third place. Dylan running in third. And Joel Trombley in fourth. Very, very close. Now, flashing to the uh, start-finish line. This is Peter taking the win. And right back there, the black car, that's uh, Nick Severin taking second place. Not much distance between the two of them, so really close race. And here we come to the finish line with Dylan and uh, Joel. We'll see who takes third place. A little bit of a slide there from Dylan, but just manages to hold him off. So another win for the Tyrrell team. And uh, second and third for uh, Colin Chapman's uh, Lotus team. Fourth for Joel, which is an excellent result. This is Nicholas Cole finishing fifth for Pinch Plant. Oops. That'll buff right out. And uh, also... Tommy had a really excellent race, too, finishing in sixth. I don't see him in this shot. That's Porks there and engaging in... Oops! And that's Momo. Other uh, people who finished in the top ten, uh, besides those that you're seeing, uh, Ace Jr. finishing seventh, uh, Brian Janik in eighth, so good result for the Hesketh team. Uh, Richard Tall ninth after that incident, and Tony finishes tenth. Yep, here come a bunch of the people I just mentioned through this section. Obligatory destruction climax. Fun, fun. Anyway, so we're back in action at the end of this week? Yes, we are. So I better get well. <coughs>